So I'd like to discuss something here. These are posts underneath the house in the middle of the floor. Here's the floor you walk on. The perimeter foundation is all along the edges. And these posts right here help support the middle of the floor. And then there's a piece of concrete right here. Now many contractors and engineers uh, retrofit this, this connection, this post, and I'll show you what they do. So here's our piece of concrete right here. That's called a pier block. Then there's this post right here. And then there's a beam that goes this way. And then that supports the floor joist. And then the floor you walk around on is right up here. So they'll put this piece of steel here and this piece of steel here. Sometimes they'll even put new concrete here. Now this is all complete waste of money. There have been no damage because of this connection being weak in previous earthquakes. None of the existing seismic retrofit guidelines of which there are five recommend doing anything here. And this is a case of an engineer or contractor making up what they believe is going to be a failure mode. Damage does not occur here. It occurs when the house rocks back and forth and if the floor above moves, then of course the post will fail, it'll tip over. But if the house doesn't move on the foundation on the outside, you don't have to worry about this. So we'll go over this a little bit more. So this is a T-strap, this is on top of a post. And so again, it's connect that uh, girder or beam to the top of the post. And again, this is a complete waste of money. This is not a failure point. This just doesn't happen. So there's no reason to spend money on this. If a contractor or engineer uh, says they're going to do this, you may really question if they have the kind of education in this subject that you would like to hire. So again, this is another one. Here we have the bottom of a post going into a pier block. Here's a bolt where they bolted it in. And again, this is completely unnecessary, very expensive. So here's an example of a house where the contractor or engineer thought this was so critical that they went and they put in new concrete here, they would put new steel right here, they put a piece of steel right here, they put them all together. And this was, again, a complete waste of money. If you take an average house and you decide to follow these procedures, you can end up spending three, four, maybe $5,000 just for this and get absolutely no benefit. And just to show you what the building code actually says, and it says here, the column shall be, and this column is the same as a post, the column shall be restrained to prevent lateral displacement at the bottom end. Lateral displacement at the bottom end can mean one nail. So the only thing really required, according to the building code, is just a connection of some type, including a nail. Now, remember the parts up here at the top, they don't even care if there's any connection at all. It can just be there on gravity. That's how unimportant this connection is. So again, if you're gonna hire someone, if they recommend this and you'd like them in every other way, say, hey, I would just assume you not do this part and you will not have compromised your retrofit at all. Now I'd like to show you some engineering details that uh, have been put together for contractors to use. An engineering detail is a drawing that shows a contractor where to put the bolts, where to put the nails, how it should be done. So here we see a drawing, and this is, a, this is the beam that supports the floor. This is the post. This is the piece of concrete uh, called the pier block. And what this engineer is doing is he's putting this T-strap. We saw a sample of one of them previously. Then there's a piece of steel right here. There's a bolt going through that piece of steel. And then there's some bolts going into the pier block. Again, this is a complete waste of money. And you can imagine how much work that would be, you know, to put in the bolts, get the hardware, drag it underneath the house, etc. This is the exact same thing here. Here we have the T-strap, where we have the post, and down here is where the pier block, the concrete is. Now look at this, it's very, very interesting. This right here, it says connections are not load rated. What that means is they don't have any resistance to earthquakes at all. They're not they're not rated to resist lateral loads generated by earthquakes. So even the manufacturer's catalog uh, tells you that these are a worthless item. Now here's one, this was one that's uh, fairly complex. I want to show you uh, how extreme some contractors and engineers can be. So the first thing this person wants to do is he wants to put in a massive amount of concrete. So this concrete is 18 inches deep, 18 inches wide. Uh, you have to dig the hole out, then you have to drag the concrete into the underneath the house. You can, sometimes you're going to be dragging it 25 feet. You have to do it a couple of times to get that much concrete. 
So there's this huge amount of concrete, then there's reinforcing steel right here, right here, right here. And then there's you know, these big steel bars that go down it. And then there's another piece of steel right here. Then there's our post. Then there we have a metal connector right here. That's the, you know, the post of beam, top of the post of beam. And then we have a piece of steel right here. So you can imagine how expensive this would be. And if you have 15 posts underneath a house, you can imagine what that would add to the cost. This particular retrofit, when we gave a bid, and this was a 1,200 square foot bungalow in uh, El Cerrito, this, was, this entire retrofit was gonna cost about $70,000 because this particular engineer did this sort of thing all over the house. So that's why you wanna be really careful about what your engineering is planning to do, what the design is going to look like because you might get something you simply can't afford. I hope the information in this video has helped you understand more about seismic retrofitting and how to protect your own home. We're producing more videos, and if you would like to know when they are available, please click the subscribe button. Thank you.